Now, part of the beauty, I believe, of the Ashtanga practice is that you do the poses in a set sequence, whether you like them or not. Now, that might sound quite punishing. Whether you like them or not, you will do this. Okay, but let me explain. Okay? Now, you might go to a yoga class somewhere, and again, I'm not in any way being disparaging of other forms of yoga, okay? But this is my belief about Ashtanga and why it is so powerful, okay? It's also criticised for the same reason. Um, often yoga is criticised for being rigid. Why do we do the same poses every week? It's so boring. Why can't we do different poses? Why can't I do something new? I just want to do a back bend, or whatever it is, okay? Very often those are some of the criticism levels with Ashtanga, okay? And the reason why you do the same poses over and over again is because if you just went onto your mat and say you said, I, I, I practice intuitive yoga, I just do the poses my body wants to do every, every, every day, and you get onto your mat, and excuse me if I'm slightly cynical, okay? And he's like, oh, you know, I do this pose because my body wants to do it. Um, these people are delusional because if you did the poses that you wanted to do, which, which poses would you do? The ones you can do. The, the easy ones. The ones you can do. So, is it the body wanting to do the poses or the mind? Remember, the body actually wants to be free. The body wants to be open and free so that it doesn't hurt. The mind would rather do the easier poses because we don't have to struggle in them. Because I hate, you know, and there's one pose particularly which you'll learn to love, where we do a back to balance pose, yeah? That we do in the standing sequence, okay? And most people, you know, they're like this pose, yeah? Oh, why do we have to do this pose? I hate it. I can't do it. I can't balance on one leg, or whatever it is. These are the things going through our head. This is the ego telling us what we can and can't do, okay? Now, if you were to do another form of yoga, you might find that you skip that pose because you don't want to do it, or you think you can't do it. And I think this is the beauty of the Ashtanga practice, and it says you do the poses whether you can do them or whether you can't do them, because it's the ones that you can't do where you actually get the benefit. It's the ones that you struggle in, the ones where you can't breathe, the ones where the teacher's saying do this, and all your brain is saying, I can't do that! Doesn't he understand? My legs don't do that. My hips don't open that way. I can't breathe. Or whatever it is. The ones where there's resistance in the system. Resistance to the pose. Resistance to whatever it is that you're being asked to do. Because it's the resistance that you come across that the yoga practice is actually trying to break down. And it's only by breaking down that resistance and moving into it that a yoga practice, an asana practice, can really have a profound effect upon the being. If you avoid the poses that you can't do, or you convince yourself that you're never going to be able to do that pose, because I've never had any core strength, ever since I had my caesarean when I was dot, 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 or whatever, then those limiting beliefs will continue to cause you problems and continue to keep you in the patterns that are um, not conducive to being free and happy, which is hopefully what the yoga practice is going to give you. So, this is why the Ashtanga practice is not an easy practice. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to challenge you. And it will. And that's one of the reasons why many people don't stick with it. It's many re reasons why some people move away from Ashtanga when they find difficulty. They come to a pose and they go, why the hell would you want to do that pose? I hate that pose. You know, I never like that pose. I'd much rather go to a class where I can do the poses. Okay? Now, by all means, if that's what you want to do, go and do it. However, you would be missing something. Okay? Because the ego will defend itself at all costs if it is challenged. And the yoga practice has the ability to begin to break it down. And if something like the ego, which is, you've spent an awful lot of energy beginning to break down, is threatened, it will defend itself at all costs. And it will do that by saying, I don't like that class. I don't like that teacher. He makes me do these poses. I don't want to do those poses. I don't see why Ashtanga has to be so limited. I don't want to do that sequence of poses. I've never been able to open my hips, I just want to do something that I can do. Or whatever it is, you know, whatever it is in the dialogue that goes through the head, you know, when we're practicing. Because we all have it to one degree or another. Even if we look across the room, you know, and we see somebody else, you know, doing a pose that looks picture perfect, and we think, I'm never going to be able to do that. There's no point in me doing this practice. 
we're going to come across obstacles in the practice. Those obstacles might come up as emotional obstacles, they might come up as mental obstacles of, well, if this is difficult, what's the first thing that I'll... It, so we have two, there's two types of people in this kind of world, okay? It's the fight or flight response, okay? You can break them down into those two types of people. So when something difficult comes along, you either... Some people will fight through it. It's usually the way that they approach life, yeah? If something difficult, go head on. We'll deal with it. Straight through it, okay? I can do this. They go into life. Somebody else, they come across something difficult, and what do they do? They run away from it. They don't come back to class. They don't practice that pose. They don't even, you know, they don't even want to go into the pose, or whatever it is. That level of avoidance, okay? I'm not suggesting either of them is the right way to go about things. Both of them are out of balance, okay? However, if you do, if for whatever reason you are avoiding a certain pose, that's where the Ashtanga practice is clever. Okay? It says you've got to do the same sequence of poses every day or three times a week or once a week or whatever, whether you like them or not, and see what happens if you stick with it. Some people do, some people don't. And I'm not suggesting Ashtanga Yoga is the only way to practice yoga or practice, the, practice asana in any way. But if you stick with it, it is an incredibly powerful practice.